All right, we're back with more SAO Arisization cut content from Mr. Fox and Enemy, and I've been getting a lot of random comments. Actually, it's like one or two people saying like, hey, stop watching this dude. This guy spoils and misinformation. Well, if that's the case, why don't you fucking join the Discord and like link the fucking link so that I can work with what I got. I'm just working what I got, and honestly, the packaging of episode one content was fantastic. If you're mad about it, why don't you show the fuck up and actually share the link then? Anyways, let's watch episode two then. SAO Alicization Episode 2 What Got Cut From Best Buddy Yu-Gi-Oh! So what's up guys, Fox in here. First off, let me give you a huge thank you. There's actually a lot of interest for the first changes video for Episode 1. Definitely do like and comment to continue seeing these weekly. And mm -hmm. yes, I do read everything you post. Anyway, let's dive into the underworld. Oh, that cliffhanger ending. What exactly happened he to He got Kitty death Man? gunned! You're actually still left in the dark about this in the light novel. However, you do get a little bit more about what happened with Asuna afterwards, and I have a strong feeling they're going to flash back to this later. So you had Kirito stabbed by Johnny Blank. Kirito was slowly dying. Asuna ran into him, telling him to hang in there. She quickly called the police on her phone. Kirito's last words to Asuna were, Asuna, sorry. <laughs> Kirito just lay there unconscious. As Still so fucking stupid how he aimed the umbrella at his thigh instead of disarming the arm, but I get it. The medical team checked his breathing. Kirito's respiratory system had failed. Unfortunately, Asuna could only watch nearby, resisting the urge to scream. She informed the paramedics of what she thought the chemical was. Meanwhile, Kirito's heart rate was drastically dropping. His heart stopped, Asuna heard them say. Unsurprisingly, Asuna was in deep shock. Asuna then saw the moment his heart rate stopped pulsing on <laughs> This is the funniest shit. The heart rate absolutely decreasing as Asuna stares at it when I have to do anything is actually so funny to me. Her phone. Then it skips into the underworld. In case you really want to know what happened to Kirito, here is an obvious spoiler. Kirito's yeah. heart did indeed stop. This unfortunately meant he suffered some brain damage due to the lack of oxygen for a time. I think that's pretty much the equivalent of like a stroke, right? You get no oxygen, but uh, you, we know what happened. Wrath, medical technology, he hooked up. There's a way of being able to, you know, uh, treat stuff like this by using the STL, blah, blah, blah. We already know. We're on like episode 11 by today, I think. Same period. And let me just oversimplify it, but Kirito is hooked up to the soul, translator to heal him. Anyway, let's enter the underworld. At the start of the episode, you see Kirito awakening in this strange fantasy world. You saw him trying to recall some of the past events. Also, I saw a really funny comment, and I was really close to banning that monkey. And he said, Kaka TV is spoiling. And I'm like, What? And he's like, He's spoiling because... He's already on like episode 10 or 11 on Patreon and Twitch, but he's saying those extra content spoilers in these cut content videos. Hey, retard. This is my channel. This is me covering cut content. I'm expecting you guys have already seen this shit. If you're getting your dumbass spoiled, that's on fucking you. You chose to click onto my video. Like, do you understand the purpose of spoilers is to prevent me from knowing the future so I can give you the best reactions possible? It has nothing to do with you monkeys potentially clicking onto a cut content video for SEO Season 3 without even watching it and then getting extra info? Like, like, some people are actually so dumb, it like blows my mind every day. It genuinely does. Vince, now what Kirito actually gave himself a little bit of a refresher. He thought to himself, full name, Kirigaya Kazuto. 17 years old and 8 months. He lives in the Saitama area with his mother and younger sister. A key part to this is that Kirito couldn't recall getting assaulted by Johnny Black or Laughing Coffin at all. Kirito's final memory was of him asking Asuna to come with him to the US. And yes, unfortunately, Kirito did not recall her answer. Only her smile. That's right. We did end up going to the US, right? Well, is the Ocean Turtle base near US territory? I actually don't really know. For Kirito trying to figure out whether this was reality or not. Before checking out his new clothing, Nabo Kirito noticed how this body still had his past scar on the left middle finger. And this marking on his right thumb. It must be real. <laughs> left middle finger and right thumb scars on Kirito? What are they from? Random facts. Alive. During this, you saw Kirito considering whether this was a possible dream. This included this yellow butterfly landing. This scene is so... I don't know. It's because I actually pay attention to the fucking show. I thought this was such a cool moment because there's a direct moment in season two, episode one, when Akirito and Asuna, before they go to GGO, they're hanging out in the park and they're talking about 
just full dive technology and the limitations. And there's this importance of, you know, lack of sensory info such that they give a direct example if a butterfly lands on your finger, you're not going to be able to feel it. Even though it looks like it's there. And Kirito said, my dream is to be able to have technology that can have this sort of data, the sensor information, so that it feels real. Fast forward to episode 2 of season 3. This scene pretty much directly, you know, calls back to that moment because this is a simulation. He feels the butterfly. It is so fucking real. So again, just that mention of lack of sensory info with the same example, but this time we're in a simulation. It is so real. ...on his hand. This butterfly scene was anime original. In the novel, the closest thing you saw to this was Kirito pulling out this small earthworm. Yeah. This green little thing kept making the soft cry. Kirito didn't know of this type of creature existing in Japan or anywhere else in the world. Nabo Kirito then noticed the extreme detail of this mystery world. VR worlds like SAO or any world used by the seed use something called detail focusing. Detail this allowed focus. whatever spot you were looking at to be fully detailed, but not the stuff around it. This was currently a limitation of the VR hardware. This meant it's like resource management, only the things that you immediately focus on, it has more details, but everything else doesn't. Kind of like how in a video game, like, you know how, uh, there's like a limit on how much resources you want to load. So sometimes if you have a bad PC, you lower the settings such that uh, assets and different shits beyond a certain radius from you will like not be completely shown, right? Meant that sudden movements will create this slight lag in your vision before you saw the details clearly. However, this wasn't the case here, so it must be reality. The technology for VR worlds to mimic this shouldn't be possible. Yet it is. Anime Kirito almost immediately thought that this place must be the underworld created by the soul translator. On the other hand, Nabo Kirito thought about three possibilities. The first was this advanced VR place, not necessarily the underworld. The second option was that he became <laughs> part of this illegal experiment. He must have been placed in some remote region. I mean, it's not too off about that. It is an experiment, but, you know, it's, it's not fake. And the third option... It is, but it isn't. Because he probably thinks that it's still IRL, but, you know, it's a simulation. ...it was the best. Kirito might have died or been Kazuma. transported into this fantasy world. Isekai! It was like job to defeat the Demon King. Hey, Kirito, Kazuma says hi. I am still under the belief that SAO has always been isekai from the beginning. And if you want to be mad about it, fuck you, pussy. It's all about semantics. If you consider a video game world when you full dive in, Aincrad is a different world. Isekai is otherworlder. You don't need to reincarnate. Reincarnation is Tensei. Again, just fucking just, just different definitions. Like if you think that the different video game world is a different world, which I think it is, it's an isekai. Nabo Kirito then thought that at least Kayaba was kind enough to give this introduction explanation before taking off. For this world, there was nothing at all. Anyway, as for a good chunk of Asuna that I wish they kept in, Nabo Kirito continued to question this mystery world. He thought about how Asuna would have surely found a way to identify this place, unlike himself. At the very least, she would have been quick to take action. I wonder Kirito if she would have. thought he was super lost without her. During the past two years, Kirito had discussed almost everything he did with her. Suddenly now, without Asuna, he felt like half of his brain was missing. Next up, Kirito at the watering hole. It's okay, we have Yuji in now, he's the other half. They actually cut this short in the anime after Kirito heard that sound in the distance. Nabo Kirito couldn't believe the purity or taste of this water. This alone removed the thought of this being a virtual world. Even the atmosphere wasn't capable of producing flowing water with this texture. As for Kirito getting that glimpse of young Yuji on Alice, definitely love the scene more in the anime, especially with the rich animation. This scene was actually only three sentences in the novel. Although, to be fair, they did have this visual for it. Episode Cut 1 from stuff. this was Kirito thinking about what he saw. This memory shouldn't be possible. There weren't any forests or rivers like that where he lives. And he's never had friends with those hair colors before either. And this is the crazy shit? Because, like, when you get out of the game, you lose the memories yeah, you had within game. But suddenly... Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you do, you do, you do. No, 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 it makes sense, it makes sense. Why was I getting confused? Because no, no, it's because this time when he got in, he ha he retains the memories from before, like IRL, like all the events happen right until you know he got Death Gun. He retained that, but the first episode he didn't, because why? Because the method of full diving is a different situation compared to when he was demo testing versus now where he's hooked up to medical technology. I'm not sure either. The children he saw also looked like they were wearing fantasy clothing. 
the Flux-like acceleration meant he should have been inside the VR world for 10 days at most, which is why he shouldn't be feeling nostalgic about some random memory. Next up, Kirito meeting the Gigas tree and best buddy Yujiu. Now Kirito noticed how the tree was a best bunny Yujiu absorbing all nutrients around it, which is why the area looked cleared off. A change for meeting Yujiu too. Originally, Yujiu was watching Kirito from behind the massive tree the entire time. Anime Yujiu only seemed to notice Kirito after getting close enough. As for Nabu Kirito's thoughts on Yujiu, to him it looked like Yujiu was either 17 or 18, and he noticed the same style clothing as himself. Something more interesting was how Kirito thought that Yujiu couldn't be considered a westerner, but also hmm. not an easterner either. He's a mid-dinner. <laughs> so he's not white or Asian? What is he? Black? What? 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 <laughs> nah, western is not specific to white, but what do you think Yujiu is then? What? Not an easterner either. Then the moment when Kirito saw Yujiu's face, he felt like if his soul was in deep pain, although only for a brief moment. As for Yujiu's- The deep pain I think links back to episode 1 content with how Alice was taken away after Yujiu and Kirito try to go for the icicles, right? His greeting, Nabu Kirito was super surprised that Yujiu was speaking perfect Japanese. This place definitely didn't exist anywhere in Japan. Anyway, a lot of these two intro conversation was kept the same. Nabu Yujiu did make a note about how Kirito's black hair was unusual in this area. It was possible he was born in the sound. After Yujiu agreed to take Kirito Because the phenotypes of hair color here is all non-black, but in the south it is black? To talk to the guards, Nawa Kirito had further thoughts. So far he concluded that Yujiu was not an NPC. Yeah, Yujiu's sure. replies were way too natural for this artificial personality program. His and now we do know that many of these characters are artificial flux lights, right? They are NPCs, but they are very sentient and they can come with their own independent thoughts. And some of them can even be able to break the taboo index, and that's what Kikuoka wants. But there was the other mention of Kirito saying, like, questioning in the earlier episodes, like, they can't, like, these players cannot all be test players. There's so much limited, you know, this technology. But doesn't that mean there's still potential that there are, like, it's not just Kirito that's just a, like an actual person in the simulation. I'm going to hold out and still believe that, like, there's going to be other people like Kirito who are from the real world using a similar technology or the same wrath technology that are in Aristization, right? It can't just be Kirito and a bunch of AIs. I'm gonna guess at least one person or another person's gonna be in there, excluding Asuna. If Asuna never shows up, of course. But like right now, I wonder if anyone else is a test player. Actions also didn't resemble those of NPCs. To him, the owner of this floodlight had a really kind personality. He would have to thank him in real life personally. In the anime, this differed. Anime Kirito still continued to question whether Yujiu was an NPC or not. During their little self-introduction, Kirito was trying to find Yujiu's name in his memory, although no luck. Next up, Yujiu talking about his childhood The closest guy named to Yujiu that we've seen so far... Fucking Eugene from the Salamanders and ALO? No, it's, there's no comparison here. Friend Alice. Slight difference with the term they used. Yujiu's sacred task is now referred to as a calling in the anime. The rest of the Alice discussion also got abridged. Anime Yujiu left out the part about young Alice being chained in front of the village. <laughs> Nabu Yujiu further mentioned how he wanted to use the axe to attack the Integrity Knight, but his yeah. body wouldn't move at all. Because system alert showed up, because this is something, and, and the anime still hasn't shown this in any other character but Yujiu. That's why I was questioning. I wonder if this is just something that shows a bit uniquely for Yu-Gi-Oh, but for everybody for Yu-Gi-Oh. And I'm not fucking asking for spoilers, but this is clearly a mechanic that prevents NPCs from breaking the taboo index. Ryos wasn't able to overcome it. He just fucking killed himself. He just like blew up. Yu-Gi-Oh's eye blew up, then he was able to defy it. That was still a very interesting scene. I'm actually really surprised that the anime left out that Alice was about to get executed at the central city. Perhaps it's a little too obvious that Alice is still around. But, is it really Alice? That's the thing we don't know about. Alice's Synthesis 30. They said they're gonna get executed, all the prisoners, right? You take them, you break the taboo index, it's, it's a law, you gotta get executed, but is it really within Wrath's best interest to execute these NPCs that were able to come to their own independent thought and break the taboo index and potentially kill? Which is exactly what Kikuka wanted? Just doesn't make sense to me. If Alice exists here, is this a clone of Alice? The original Alice that we saw is dead, but they took the soul of that Alice and basically duplicated it many times and there's many clones? Or is it simply the Alice from before that got brainwashed and is now in the same body but just not the same mind? Obvious that Alice is still around. 
Nambo Kirito here was in deep thought after hearing the name Alice. Kirito felt this mixture of loneliness and nostalgia shaking his soul. He thought it was strange that the name was similar to Alice from Alice in the Wonderland novel, mm -hmm. which also connected back to Wrath and the Soul Translator. All of this being a coincidence would be way too surprising. Kirito then shifted his thoughts to Yuji. But it's, it is, you know, intentional. Aristization, Alice, right? Alice in Wonderland, breaking the sin and, you know, going somewhere that she shouldn't have. Into the underworld as well. That's the whole parallel. It's all there. Yuji was standing in front of him. Yuji spoke about this memory from 10 years ago. However, the Soul Translator experiment be- Why do I think Kikoka has control of Alice? Because intuitively, Kikoka is like running wrath operations. Do you not think that it is very feasible that someone that is looking specifically for people that's able to kill or break the taboo index and break free thought doesn't have control over a fucking program which are just a bunch of zeros and ones that we can just program? I think it's extremely intuitive to assume that Kikuoka could have definitely control over Alice or any people that gets brought in. All the integrity knights, he could have just brainwashed them in order to have these people that's able to be, you know, man-made fucking armies later. That's the whole plan, right? began only three months ago. The three times acceleration wouldn't match up with this. Perhaps this whole place was sped up even more. Now for a good chunk cut out for the anime. Nabo Yujo brought up how Kirito looked the same age as himself. Wasn't Kirito also assigned the sacred task too? Ditching your sacred task, then traveling should be something that's impossible. But it was for Kirito. Was his calling also Tree Chopper in episode one? Maybe it was. But like, the link ended. Then he came back. I, maybe after each link start, every new session, you, you get a new calling. That was interesting how Kirito kind of was freed from his duties of being a tree chopper by episode 2. And then he kind of just bullshitted and said, uh, I'm a swordsman now. Now while Kirito then came up with further thoughts about this. It was obvious that Yuji wasn't a simple NPC from what he witnessed. But at the same time, Yuji's actions seemed to be bound by absolute rules. It seemed similar to how NPCs couldn't deviate yes. from said bound. Taboo index! Now Kirito then asked if there was anyone else who ever broke the taboo index and got taken to the capital. Yeah. Yuji explained that in the 300 year history of their village, the only case of this ever happening was for Alice. Really? From this village though, from this specific village. Because, like, number 31, we saw that new Integrity Knight. And Synthesis 31, obviously, if we're going by order of, like, joining, then 31, I guess, is after Alice, right? But only one person from this village ever has broken Taboo Index, Alice, huh? Here, Kirito was shocked at the 300 years mention. That shouldn't be possible. Perhaps the actual acceleration was several hundreds or a thousand times. Uh, I forget the ratio. Was it 5,000x? Anyway, after Kirito heard about Yuji making minimal progress on the Gigas tree, he wondered about something. In this artificial world, someone must have intentionally placed this here. Yeah. Although Kirito had no idea why. Oh, and now Kirito noticed how Yuji. Someone placed the Gigas tree there. Don't know why. But what is the point of the Gigas tree? I honestly don't fucking know. It just exists to su suck up all the nutrients and prevents the village from being able to produce crops. And the calling of these different. Kids in the village were assigned the task so they could chop the tree down. But why would a dev potentially put the Gigas tree there? Sometimes, like, I just assume that it's a developer of Wrath that did that. But, <laughs> I don't know, maybe someone planted a seed a long fucking time ago. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yuji was swinging the axe so fluently was as if sword skills existed in this world. Oh, they do. Except Kirito's own ch Oh, sword skills exist. And these devs are so fucking lazy. Uh, they just basically copy pasted and just reskinned it with different names. Chopping attempts. A change here with Kirito calling the sword skill Smash instead of the sword skill Horizontal in the novel. As for Yuji examining the Gigas tree's remaining life, Nabu Kirito actually thought about how it was strange that the name was a combo. How about this? The Gigas tree was placed there with such an unreasonable durability. Obviously, no sane person would race their entire life chopping a tree. And perhaps, again, this is one of those tests where they placed it to be like, is anyone going to rebel? Like, are you really going to spend the rest of your fucking life here chopping this fucking tree? Or are you going to, like, abandon your calling, break the taboo index, and seek freedom? I could, I could believe that. Maybe. I, I don't know. I could totally believe that. Both English and Latin. Seems that English words made up the world's so-called sacred arts. It was likely that Yuji didn't know he was speaking the language called Japanese either. Next up, Yuju putting the axe away. The novel actually mentioned some- <laughs> Just the fucking- 
<laughs> what if it was a dev dummy target to test damage? That'd be hilarious. <laughs> like a simulation room, like a training punching bag, but they just placed it this random place. But it's intentionally sapping away the fucking nutrients and shit. I don't know, man. I wonder if there's an intention with this tree or not. If there is, who knows? If there wasn't, that's so fucking troll. Some other weapons in the shed, including this long leather item. Further cut was the talk about not stealing. Right here, Kirito asked why the village even needed guards if stealing was forbidden. Yuji explained that the guards protected the village from the dark forces. On the other side of the mountain- The dark forces. The dark knights would cross the territory and, and invade? I wonder if they've ever done that before. It was the land of darkness, where the light of solace couldn't reach. In that dark land lived demi-humans like goblins, orcs, and other horrible monsters. And we fight them later. It was the duty of the integrity knights to protect the mountain range. And then for a major important piece cut out, Yuji mentioned how every 1,000 years or so, the light of solace would weaken. At that what? Every 1,000 years or so, the light of souls would weaken. The god of sun weakens. At that time, the dark force... Huh. There's like this one time. Not a century, but every 1,000 years. They're the weakest, and it's the perfect opportunity to attack. Surely that time is gonna... I wonder if we're almost at that 1,000 year mark for us. At that time, the dark forces led by the Dark Knights would try to invade. Oh. In that great war, the guards, sentinels, and the Imperial army led by the Integrity Knights would fight back. Oh, that's hype. Yuji was super surprised that Kirito didn't know any of this. It was supposed to be a tale that even young children were taught. Next up, the two- Yeah, and Yuji never fucking guesses. Has Yuji ever actually guessed why Kirito is so different and like- no, he glazes him so much. Yuji will love Kirito so much. He believes him no matter what. And even if Kirito were to be that person, Yuji would accept. Meeting the town guard, Jink. In the novel, both of these did meet this guy, but the rest of Who the fuck is this guy? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is one of the first people that we shit on with the sword skill. Kirito learned how to use sword arts. And he realized that, oh shit, it's the same shit in this game. In the novel, both of these did meet this guy, but the rest of this is anime original. I'm talking about their little sword test. Great anime original scene. I love that moment. You might be wondering why. I see there being two very good reasons. The first would be to make Jink more of a character early on. From this, you can surely tell that he's gonna show up later. And the second reason, Kirito just dem- Is he gonna show up later? I mean, I would have expected him to show up at the academy. Imagine Jink is a fucking integrity knight now. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. I don't know why do you say that? He's gonna show up later? Okay. Demonstrated that some sort of sword skills do exist in the underworld. Yeah, they do. Next up, the two arriving at the church. The anime added. Yeah, they copied the exact same movesets. The exact identical sword skills from fucking SAO. And then renamed this shit. <laughs> That's why Kirito can counter everything. Because he just fucking knows them already. Kirito mentioning how it was weird that no one doubted at all that he was the lost child of Vecta. As for Selka here, here's some skip details. Right, lost child of Vecta is like, you know, Vecta is the god of darkness, but also the tales of lost child of Vecta is like a convenient excuse for people that log in, log out, they just go away and disappear and show up out of nowhere, right? She's supposed to be the apprentice sister studying at the church to learn the sacred arts. Then you got Kirito's conclusion at nighttime. Namo Kirito thought about how the Wrath Company only had one soul translator. Mm. Three more were supposed to be rolled. Three more! Two. Still, that wouldn't be enough for 300 villagers. Okay, okay, okay. Three more. Um, Asuna is definitely going to be one of the three. Two more people can come in. Loki want Clank coming in. Lisbeth, nah. Silica, maybe. Sugu, maybe. I don't know. Agil? Agil's washed. Agil's never showing up. They're not paying that voice actor, bro. It's, it's, it's GG. It's fucking GG. But that's very interesting. Three more STL is potentially on its way. And it should have also been impossible to secretly gather thousands of test players as well. Anime Kirito then quickly jumped to the conclusion that these people must be copies of newborns mm -hmm. born and raised in VR. In other words, artificial- That's a crazy fucking guess. <laughs> that is an insane fucking guess. Yo, Loki, you know who else I want to show up in the fucking STL? Fuck our crew. Bring that dude from episode one, uh, the leader of that guy from the American military guy. I don't know if he's laughing coffin, but he was hanging out. Remember those dudes in episode one during, you know, GGO. Yo, fuck you. Bring them in. Official flock lines. Kirito and the novel took a good while to reach that conclusion. Kirito first thought about the possibility of them being AI, although current AI didn't have real intelligence. 
Yuji, for example, showed very natural human expressions. The highest top level. This entire just season is the Turing test. It's like interacting with the computer and trying to realize like, is this AI? Is this computer? Are you real? Are you fake? AI that Kirito was familiar with was Yui. It was after only monitoring thousands of players that Yui was able to build up this amazingly large database to reply from. Mm -hmm. Yui might be considered real intelligence. However, Yui was not perfect. Yui would sometimes express mild confusion when her database didn't have the information. Yui, Yui was still so fucking cracked. All of season one and two, like Yui clutched so hard. Even in season three, the way that like Yui was able to help find where Kirito was located, remember? That episode when we were outside the game and Asuna went over the had the uh, undercover uh, secretary look from Rinko and stuff. Yujo and the villagers were vastly different. Now, getting into the talk oh, about the artificial Kikoka. Kikoka. Assuming Kirito was right, Wrath could be reaching into the realm of the gods. Literally, realm of the gods. That whole example scene where Higa's unperfected AI was questioning, I am the real thing. Why am I stuck in here? That was actually traversing the boundaries of mortals. That, that felt like an abomination, something that mankind should not be touching. Intuitively, just with, from within, I can just feel that it's wrong, even though I don't know how to really express it. But Kikoka is trying to do that. He's trying to create these artificial fucking clones that's able to kill and break in the, in the, uh, break the taboo index and be able to be soldiers so that potential SDF members don't have to die anymore, right? Instead of real people dying, let's just copy a bunch of uh, AIs, implant their souls into the, you know, the robots that he guys also making. There's like, you know, uh, Ichimonji or something is number one prototype. There's like Nimonji or whatever, Nemon, I think. And then we're going to have basically Clone Wars, just implant souls, just implant a bunch of fucking Alice's into a bunch of robots and they'll be the next super soldiers that can fight against, I don't know, mankind. And next up, that mysterious ending. Technically, all of this is anime original. You might have guessed what this white tower is. It's actually it's the so-called Axian church in the central city. As for who this naked lady That is still a mystery. We saw her once, she has blue hair, have never seen her again. It is on top. She goes by many names. For now, just know that she's the highest ranking leader of the Axian Church. All right. She's known as the Admin. The it's Admin. It's interesting how they're showing you her this early on in episode two. In the novel, you might- Yeah, because like, we're not going to see her. Like, we're on episode 11 or something. Still, we don't fucking know who she is. I've had a slight reference to the leader. But you don't find out or get any concrete details until way later. Yeah. I actually do like how they're giving you a taste this early on. Yeah, sure. A taste for sure. Right now, I am planning to do a video explaining this underworld. That's coming up later. I'm trying to figure out how exactly to split up the information. It might be several videos. Better than I can farm more and more and more. Guys, please go give Mr. Fox an enemy sub. Go check out his video and like it if you enjoyed it. Is this considered a spoiler? Eh, mild spoilers. I don't mind having extra context like this, to be honest. And... I just enjoy cut content stuff, but yeah, episode two was like back in the fucking game, and this time it's totally different, right? We're like, Kirito is back, but every time has passed, and they don't remember him, but he kind of remembers a little bit and stuff like that. Anyways, if there's any um other cut content content creators that you, uh, you want me to check out, just like, just, just, just fucking join the Discord. Just show up on the fucking stream and join the Discord. That's that's literally where I fucking get pulled this shit from. But his videos are perfectly fine in my opinion.